You can tell from my accent, I'm all the way from Australia and I'm very grateful to be here today. Um, this evening, my company, media.com's the gold sponsor, sorry, the headline sponsor of the International Public Relations Association's Gala Award Dinner in Barcelona. So we're very grateful to be here. Um, the topic I'm going to talk to you about in the next 10 minutes or so um, is, I think, absolutely critical at this juncture of information, misinformation and disinformation around the world. Before I kick off, I just wanted to set the scene a little bit. There's a personal story I want to share with you all. I set up my own personal investment group in 2009. Um, we made investments in about 11 countries around the world. Business was going well. Everyone was paid. The investments were growing in value. I'm a modern case study of the impact of misinformation. In December 2019, a short seller wrote to the Deputy Commissioner in Australia at our corporate regulator and made a whole range of wild accusations. Those accusations unfortunately went untested. And even at the bottom of that email, which we only saw about six months ago, it was said this was entirely speculative, but my spidey sense was going off badly. That triggered a journalist to then go and seize upon the, the information. Has anyone heard of Christopher Scase? He's an international fugitive from the 80s or 90s that fled to a place very close to here called Mallorca, and I was compared to him. A few months later, the regulator issued proceedings. They then issued a second proceeding in the Federal Court of Australia, and they thought that I was going to flee overseas to the British Virgin Islands and disappear with millions of dollars. But that wasn't the case. I ended up with a 20-year ban for dealing in financial products. I was banned from leaving the country. And of course, the media enjoyed writing headlines such as they've caught you know, a big fish and of course there are plenty more people like me in the ocean. Unfortunately, that article didn't touch on the fact that I had appealed those decisions. As a result of the appeal, they were both overturned unanimously by three judges. But of course, the stain is still there and I'm sure all of you appreciate the impact when something like that happens. In the first instance, it's front page news and even if you win on appeal, it almost doesn't make the paper. The reputational harm has been virtually irre irreparable. It's caught, cost over a billion dollars worth of damage, caused a huge amount of impact on many, many people, including obviously many job losses. I'm just one of millions of situations that are going on around the world at the moment relating to misinformation. Misinformation, as you've probably seen in the press recently, um, is impacting the Israeli war. There's been images posted on Twitter um, of the Syrian war pretending to be the Israeli war. There are decisions to do with what we buy, what we put into our body off the back of COVID-19. Personal safety, elections are run and, run and won on information. And obviously there are business decisions, personal relationship decisions. Information is absolutely critical to every decision that we make. I might be bold in saying this, but I believe that if misinformation and where the world's going with information at the moment is almost as big, if not as big as the impact of climate change. I'll go one step bolder and I'll say, I think the impact of misinformation and disinformation is actually a greater threat to humanity than climate change. Why do I say that? Climate change is progressive. It takes time. Information is instant. Someone can publish something online that someone makes a decision off the back of that could cause a bomb to be dropped on the wrong city. In my instance, it was on the wrong business. As I said, this is happening every day of the week all over the world. So why are we in this predicament? I believe it's because we have broken fundamentals of information. Firstly, if you look at how information is put together, first thing is, well, where does it come from? Now, where does information come from today? Media, social media. You now there's a study done, I think uh, I read in the paper the other day which again may not be correct, but the study done that said 30% of people now obtain news from social media. That's a staggering amount. Now let's, uh, so information gets published from a source, 
there is the content of that information. And of course, then there should be a level of accountability relating to that information, but look at where it's broken. Those that are publishing information, being the media publishers and the social media publishers, what are they driven by? Advertising revenues. Being driven by advertising revenues and having a business model that is trying to be a purveyor of information is a complete misalignment. Online, you have fake profiles. Could you imagine if the social, a social media giants went and retrofitted their databases with verification for every single profile? Misinformation would be reduced drastically. Content, as we all know, there's misinformation and disinformation. And from an accountability perspective, there is poor dialogue taking place between the traditional media publishers and the general public. And again, a great example, the media said this, or in fact, some, some third party, a competitor said this, the media then said that, and where was, I with, where was I to go and respond to that? On social media, on Twitter, highly ineffective. So how did we get here? The printing press was invented in 1440, or thereabouts, the Gutenberg printing press, and along came secondhand information. That is what the media is publishing. This situation happened to this person or this business over here. And that's been going on for centuries. They long came in 2004, um, Facebook. And of course, Facebook was started as a photo sharing website. And now all of a sudden, Facebook and the other social media platforms that had their origins in social are now holding themselves out as also being involved in media. And so many people, 30% of the population, which is over a billion people, get their information from social media. So what does, the, what does the future look like? Firstly, I believe that the ecosystem of information, it is possible for publishers and individuals and brands, as in the people and businesses that the publishers write about to safely coexist. They are absolutely integral to one another. The reason being, is that there should be accountability and dialogue. If something happens to this person or this business and the media reports on it, this business or individual should have the ability to have a right of reply. However, that doesn't really exist at the moment. What do you do? Jump on Instagram and post, post something, post a formal apology. You know, that, this is what's happening at the moment. This is why I say it's so broken. So the future of information, I believe, is Whilst you will always have the third party media writing secondhand information, there will continue to be content that is user generated. That content will be written and published on verified profiles that immediately introduces accountability. And thirdly, rather than having a business model that is driven based on advertiser revenues, it needs to be built on platforms where the platform is paid for by the user for quiet enjoyment. Look at this room. We have quiet enjoyment of this room. If this was social media, there'd be 10 more people on stage with their 100 audiences and it would be complete chaos reigning. And that's what's taking place on social media at the moment. So the benefit for reputation management, if we can implement these three key things, firstly, people have clear air to communicate their position. Secondly, they're not going to be in a position where they're going to get trolled, abused, and feel unsafe. We can help reduce misinformation and disinformation. Obviously, there's then better dialogue between the traditional media and the online media or individuals and brands. And of course, there are significant mental health benefits if people can actually have the ability to publish their views in a safe environment. I've got a 60 second video to, sh video to show you. The world is facing an information crisis. Reputations, brands, and relationships that have taken decades to build are being destroyed at light speed by misinformation and disinformation. This is why we created Media.com. Media.com empowers you to take control of your reputation by telling your story in a structured, authentic, incredible way, free from interference. 
in an era where false or misleading statements can be damaging to your personal or business brand, Media.com gives you a right of reply. You can engage with and respond to all forms of media with content that becomes searchable and shareable directly from your verified Media.com profile. The future of reputation management and information integrity starts with Media.com. We invite you to be part of it. Our website is up. You can go and register. Um, please feel free and come to chat to me anytime. I'll hang around for the next half hour. But thank you everyone very much for your time.